live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering theCUBE, New York City 2018. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone here, live in New York City for CUBE NYC, formerly Big Data NYC, now called CUBE NYC. The topic has moved beyond big data. It's about cloud, it's about data, it's also about potentially blockchain in the future. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We're happy to have a special guest here, Rune Murthy, he's the co-founder and chief product officer at Hortonworks. Uh, been in the ecosystem from the beginning at Yahoo, or normally been on the Cube many times, but great to see you, thanks for coming Likewise, on. Likewise, thanks, thanks for having me. Um, super smart to have, have you on here because a lot of people have been squinting through the noise mm -hmm. of the marketplace. You mm -hmm. guys have been now for a few years on this data plane idea. So you guys have actually launched Hadoop yeah. uh, with Cloudera, they were first. You came in from Yahoo, became second, two big players. Evolved it quickly, you guys saw early on that this was bigger than Hadoop. And now, all the conversations on what you guys have been talking about three years ago. <laughs> Give us the update, what's the, what's the product update? Obviously hybrid's a big part of that, what's the story? Great point, um, you know, we started off being the Hadoop company. Um, you know, I was sort of, you know, Rob, uh, our CEO, who was here on Cube a couple of uh, hours ago, he called it sort of the phase one of the company, right, we were a Hadoop company. Um, very quickly we realized that uh, we had to help enterprises manage the entire lifecycle data, all the way from the edge to the data center, to the cloud in between, right? So, which is why we did the acquisition of uh, Onyara, we've been talking about it, which kind of became the basis of our Hortonworks data flow product. And then as we kind of went through that phase of that journey, it was quickly obvious to us that enterprises had to manage data and applications um, in a hybrid manner, right? Which is both on-prem and, and public load and increasingly edge, which is kind of really where uh, we spend a lot of time these days with you know, IoT and uh, sort of you know, everything from autonomous cars to video monitoring to all of these uh, aspects uh, coming in. Which is why we wanted to get to the data plane architecture, allows you to get to a consistent security governance model. Uh, there's a lot of kind of, you know, I'll call it, there's a lot of like fud out there about cloud being insecure and so on. I don't think there's anything inherently insecure about the cloud. The issue that we see is lack of skills. You know, enterprises know how to manage the data on-prem. They know how to do LDAP groups and, you know, Kerberos mm -hmm. and AD and, you know, and what have you. They just don't have the skill sets yet to be able to do it on the public cloud, which leads to mistakes occasionally mm -hmm. and data breaches and so on. So our, our, we recognized really early and part of data plan was to get that consistent security and governance models so you don't have to worry about you know, how you set up IAM roles on Amazon mm -hmm. versus LDAP on-prem versus something else in Google. Mm -hmm. right? It's operating consistent. It's operating, exactly. And we've talked about this in the past. So kind of data plan was that journey. And, you know, and this week uh, at Strata, kind of what we announced was we wanted to take that step further. We've, we've been able to kind of allow uh, enterprise to manage this hybrid architecture, on-prem, multiple public loads, and the edge in a connected manner. The, the issue we kind of saw pretty early on, and you know, it's something we've been working on for a long while, is that um, we've been able to connect the architectures, but Hadoop, when it started, it was more of an on-premise architecture, right? And, and I was there in 2005 and six when it started. Hadoop started, was born in a world where we had a, a gigabit of Ethernet. Right, and I was up to the rack, and from the rack on, we had only like eight gigs up to a rack. So if you have like a, you know, two thousand node cluster, you're dealing with eight gigs of connection, which is a huge bottleneck. You know, fast forward today, you know, you know, you have at least ten, if not hundred gigabits, moving to a hundred, you know, a terabit architecture uh, from a networking standpoint. And then what's happening is in that world, everything you can, you can, if we had the opportunity to rethink some of the assumptions we had in Hadoop, um, and then. You know, the good news is that when the when cloud came along, you know, cloud already had decoupled storage and storage and compute architectures. And as we've helped customers sort of navigate the two worlds um, with data plane, it's it's been a journey that's you know, been reasonably successful. I think we have an opportunity to kind of you know kind of provide identical, consistent architectures both on-prem and cloud. So it's almost like we took Hadoop, adapted it to cloud, and I think we can adapt the cloud architecture back. Uh, on-prem too, to have so consistent about, architectures. So, so you talk about the cloud native architecture. So you have a post that just got published. Mm -hmm. uh, cloud native architecture for big data in the data center. Mm -hmm. No, the cloud native architecture to big data in the data center. Mm -hmm. the, that's hybrid. Mm -hmm. Explain the hybrid model. How is that, how is that, how do you define that? Yeah, like I said, for us, it's really important to be able to um, you know, have consistent architectures, consistent security, consistent governance. 
consistent way to manage data and consistent way to actually develop and port applications, right? So portability for data is important, which is why having security and governance consistently is a key. And then portability for the applications themselves are important, which is why we're so excited to kind of be, uh, you know, kind of first to embrace the whole containerize the ecosystem initiative, right? And uh, you know, we, we've announced the Open Hybrid Architecture Initiative, which is, which is about decoupling storage and compute, and then leveraging containers for all the big data apps for the entire ecosystem. And this is where, again, we're really excited to be working with both IBM and Red Hat, uh, especially Red Hat, given their sort of investments in uh, Kubernetes and OpenShift. We see that much like you'll have S3 and EC2, S3 for uh, storage, EC2 for compute, um, and same thing with ADLS and Azure Compute, you'll actually have the next-gen HDFS and Kubernetes. So is this a massive architectural rewrite, or is it more sort of Great question. management around Great the question. Core? So part of it is evolution of the architecture. We have to get, you know, whether it's Spark or Kafka or Hive or any of these open source projects, we need to do some evolution of the architecture to, lev to make them work in the ecosystem, in the, in the containerized world, right? So we're containerizing every one of the 28 animals, 30 animals in the zoo, right? So that's, that's a lot of work. Uh, we're we're kind of, you know, well sort of do it. We've done this in the past. Uh, and along with that, you, to your point, it's not enough just to have that architecture. It, you need to have a consistent fabric to be able to manage and operate it, which is really where data plane comes in again. That was really the, the point of data plane all the time, right? Uh, this is a, like, you know, a multi-year roadmap. You know, we, when we sit down, we're thinking about what we'll do in 20. 22 and 23, but we really have to execute on a multi-year roadmap. And, and data really, plane was a linchpin. Well, it was just like the you know the maybe. sharp edge yeah. of the sword, right? Like, that was the tip of the sphere. Mm. But really, the the idea was always that we have to get data plane in to kind of get that hybrid product out there, mm -hmm. and then we can sort of get to a an iteration of data plane which would work with the next iteration of uh, you know the big data ecosystem itself. Do you see Kubernetes and um, you know? things like Kubernetes, you got Istio, these service meshes up the stack. Absolutely. Are going to play a pretty instrumental role around orchestrating workloads and providing new stateless and stateful application with data. So now data, become, you got more data being generated exactly. there. Exactly. So this is a new dynamic. This, it sounds like a, that's a fit for what you guys are doing. Which is something we've seen for a while now, right? Like containers is something we've tracked for a long time. Uh, really excited to see kind of Docker, um, and particularly now with Red Hat, you know, the, all the work they're doing with Red Hat containers get to security and so on. It's sort of the maturing of that ecosystem. And now, the ability to be able to port, you know, build and port applications. Um, and the really cool part for me is, uh, you know, as much, we'll, see, we'll definitely see like Kubernetes and, uh, you know, OpenShift and so on on-prem. But even if you look at the cloud, the really nice part is each of the cloud providers themselves provide a Kubernetes service. Whether it's GKE on Google or Fargate on Amazon or, you know, AKS on Microsoft. We'll be able to take identical architectures and leverage them. You know, when we, when we containerize Hive or Kafka or Spark, we'll be able to do this on Kubernetes on-prem with OpenShift, yeah. and there'll be OpenShift online, which is available um, in the public cloud, but also GKE and uh, Fargate and AKS. What's interesting about the Red Hat relationship is, and I think you guys really have smart to do this, is by partnering with Red Hat, you can customers can run their workloads, analytical workloads, exactly in the same production environment as Red Hat is in, mm -hmm. but with, that, with with kind of differentiation, if you will, exactly with data plane. Right? The data plane is just a wonderful thing there. So yeah. again, good move there. Now around the ecosystem, who other who else are you partnering with? Who do you see out there? Um, who's in your world that's important? You know, again, you know, our friends at IBM. We've had a long uh, relationship with them, and you know, we're doing a lot of work with IBM to integrate. Data Plane and also ICPD, which is the IBM Cloud Private for Data, uh, which brings along all of the IBM ecosystem, whether it's DB2 or IGC, information governance uh, catalogs, all of that kind of world back in this world. And what we also believe this will give a flip to is the whole st continued standardization on security and governance, right? Mm -hmm. So you guys remember the ODP, it caused a, a bit of a flutter uh, <laughs> right, a few years ago. <laughs> just a little bit, yeah, exactly. We kind of know how that turned out. <laughs> But what we did was we've kind of said ODPI you now was started was based on the Hadoop distributions, right? Now it's ODPI has turned to be more about metadata and governance. So we're collaborating with IBM with on ODPI more around metadata and governance because again we see that as being very critical in the sort of multi-cloud on-prem edge kind of work. Well, the narrative was always well, why do you need it? But it's clear that you, these three companies have succeeded 
dramatically. When you look at your financials, you know, there's been public statements made about IBM's contribution Absolutely. to seven-figure deals for you mm -hmm. guys. We had Red Hat on, and yeah. you guys are sort of birds of a feather. So exactly. It certainly worked for you three, which presumably means it confers value to your customers. Which is really important, right? From a customer standpoint, what is, what is something we would really focus on is the fact that the benefit of the bargain for the customer is now they understand that some of their, their key vendor partners, that's us and my, IBM and uh, Red Hat, we have a shared roadmap. So now they can be much more sure about the fact that they can go to containers and mm -hmm. Kubernetes and, you know, and so on and so on because all of the tools they depend on are, and all the partners they depend on are working together. So they can together. place bets. They can place bets, yeah. exactly. And, and the more important thing is they can place longer term bets, mm -hmm. not a you know, quarter bet, right? right. You know, you know, we've, we've, we hear about customers um, talking about building their next-gen data centers with Kubernetes in mind, mm. right? They have to. They have to, right? And it's, it's more than just building machines up because what happens is with this world, we talk about things like networking. The way you do networking in this world with Kubernetes is different than you do before. So now they have to place longer-term bets and they, they can do this now with the guarantee that the three of us will work together to deliver on the architecture. Well, Varun, great to have you on theCUBE, great to see you. Final question for you, as you guys have a long, good long plan, which is very cool, short term, customers are realizing, you know, okay, the setup phase is over, now they're in usage mode. Absolutely. So the, 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 the data's got to deliver value, mm -hmm. so there's a real pressure for ROI. Mm -hmm. You know, we would give people a little bit of pass earlier on, yeah. because, you know, set up everything, set up the clusters, set up the data lakes, do all this stuff, get it all operationalized, but now, with the AI and machine learning mm -hmm. front and center, yes. that's a signal that people want to start putting this to work. What have you um, seen customers gravitate to from the product side? Where are they going? Is it the streaming? Is it the Kafka? Is it the, what products are they gravitating to? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I look at these in terms, in my role, I look at these in terms of use cases, right? We're certainly seeing a you know, kind of continued push towards the you know, real-time analytics space, which is kind of why we place longer term bet on HDF and Kafka and IFA and so on. But what's been really heartening, kind of back to your sentiment, is that we're seeing a lot of push right now on security and governance, right? So which is why we introduced, uh, for GDPR, we introduced a bunch of capabilities in uh, data plane with DSS and James, uh, you know, Kubilius wrote about this early in the year. We're seeing customers really push on us for key aspects like GDPR, right? Mm. This is a reflection for me of the fact that of the maturing of the ecosystem. It, it means that it's no longer something on the side that you play yeah. with. It's something that's more, the whole ecosystem is now more of a system of record and sort of a you know, system of augmentation. So that's really heartening. It also brings you know, a sharper focus and more sort of responsibility on our shoulders. to awesome. place to be in. Well, congratulations. You guys have a stock prices of 52 week high. Congratulations. <laughs> Those booming. things take care of themselves, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get good products, stock price takes care exactly. of itself. Okay, theCUBE coverage here in New York City. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Stay with us for more live coverage. All things data happening here in New York City. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>